And now we're going to look at the gospel, uh, which is the Annunciation. It's Luke, um, starting one, starting with verse 28 and going down to 37, 38 really, uh, 26 to 28. So we've had already in Luke, Gabriel announcing to Zechariah the birth of John the Baptist. Now we have in the sixth month after that. That's why the end he'll say, and this is the sixth month with her who was was said to be uh, sterile because nothing is impossible to God, which is an allusion to what the angel said to Sarah in the same situation, elderly, beyond the age of childbearing, going to bear a child. Okay. So, uh, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee named Nazareth. Now, uh, I've told you before, that was not a metropolis. You know, it was a tiny little town, not noted for anything, except there wasn't even a road to it. There was a footpath, donkey path, but you didn't have to bring carts or anything up there most of the time. And so, uh, and so, the angel comes to her, huh? And going into her, he says, Kere kikaritomeni, rejoice, most blessed one. Now, remember, Mary is an Israelite. Mary loves the Lord. Mary ponders the scriptures. She ponders, she, she understands the mysterion, the plan of God, where it's going, huh? And so, uh, she prays. I'm just going to read you a couple of these texts. Um, uh, that is, people recall the days of old, the days of Moses. This is Isaiah 63. Where is he who brought them through the sea with the shepherd of the flock? Where is he who sent his Holy Spirit among them, who sent his glorious arm of power to be at Moses' right hand, who divided the waters before them to gain for himself everlasting renown, who led them through the depths like a horse in open country they did not stumble? This is how you guided your people, to make for yourself a glorious name. Where are you now? You promised. Mary promised this, you see. Mary prayed this. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you, as when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, to come down and make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you, that's Sinai. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. That's Isaiah 61. Can you imagine her praying this? She knew it by heart. She prayed this. Come, Lord, come down. Open up the heavens, you see? Um, and then all the nations will stream to... Uh, uh, Yahweh's mountain. Come, let us go to the mountain of Adonai, to the house of the God, that he may teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. The dream was that the Messiah would come. He would sanctify the people. He'd make them really God's people, and then they could tell the whole world and teach the whole world the Torah. God had a better plan. The Torah would come in flesh himself, the very word of God. Instead of speaking, he would live and show us what it means to live. Now Mary knew this, you see. There are others um, that I want to point out, if I can find them quickly. Uh, Zechariah, Zephaniah. Okay, here's Zephaniah 3. This one we need to understand the very first words of the angel's greeting, you see. He starts off, um, and of course I've lost my place now. Um, 
rejoice. Chere kiktari tomeni. What is that? Chere, daughter of Zion. Zephaniah 3. Why? Messianic proclamation. Shout aloud, rejoice, exult with all your heart, daughter of Jerusalem. Adonai has repealed your sentence. He has turned your enemy away. Yah Adonai is king among you. Israel, you have nothing more to fear. Or again in Zechariah, sing, rejoice, daughter of Zion, for now I am coming to live among you, Adonai declares. So, so when this, uh, when Our Lady ma- immaculately conceived in transforming union with God, brought up to such an intimacy with God, and she hears these words, she knows this is messianic proclamation. So she's troubled. See? Um, and these, she was troubled by these words, you see? And began to think within herself what this greeting might mean. And the angel says to her, Mi fabu miriam, mariam. That's the beginning of every important oracle, practically every important oracle, in the whole of the Old Testament. al tira, don't be afraid. And then comes the oracle, and then a sign. And we'll see it right here. And every one of these birth oracles of the Old Testament follow that. You know, Behold, a virgin shall conceive, and grand you shall call his name, and so forth. So many of these, you see? And so, do not fear, Mary, you have found charis with God. Now, in a Semitic language, that would be, you have found favor. You have found chen. Uh, you have found favor, grace with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. And you shall call his name Jesus. And now, who is this one? He goes on to describe him. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High because He is the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give Him the throne of David, His Father. You have rejected us. Not forever. Here comes the one who will fulfill all the prophecies made to David about the eternity of His reign in His Son. That's why Jesus is son of David. And so, you see, uh, and the Lord his God will give him the throne of David, his, his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob, the whole house of Jacob, all 12 tribes, forever. Ten of them have been lost, but he'll rule over them, east to Seonas, in heaven. The tribes are gathered there. You know that. Just look at Revelation 7. You see? And of his kingdom, there's never going to be any more end. The kingdom of David is established forever according to the prophecy. And the son of David, the seed of David, is here. That's why Matthew starts his gospel, as I think I just pointed out. The son of David, the son of Abraham. And so, you see? Uh, Now, Mary said to the angel, how can this be? For literally, because I do not know man. Now, this is so mysterious, we probably are never going to fully figure it out. But what he say? she's saying is, look, she's engaged. Luke just told us that, right? She's engaged to a man named Joseph of the house of David. She's engaged. Her mother and father have already worked out the engagement to Joseph. So how can this be on one level... There's no mystery. It'll be the way every every child is born. Yet, she must have made some arrangement with God, vowed her virginity somehow to God, moved by the Holy Spirit, not even knowing the full extent of why she was doing this. But she's done it. Now, uh, she obeyed her parents and uh, got engaged to Joseph because she trusted David. Uh, he trusted Jesus, trusted the Lord, and uh, so she obeyed her parents. 
still waiting to see how God was going to work all this out. Her whole life was like this, was it not? Now the Messiah is among us. He's persecuted. He's mocked. He gets a little group of people who love him. Everybody else thinks he's nuts. And finally, they kill him. And that's the Messiah. That's the one who's going to rule forever, even according to the prophecy given to her. You see the life of faith she led? As John Paul II said, though she started off with a life of faith, greater than we'll ever catch up to, she still had to grow in faith. The second part is John Paul II. The first, second, first part was me. Um, and he will rule over the house of Jacob. And of his kingdom there will not be a telos. And Mary says, how is this going to be? And the angel says to her, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. Like over the Ark of the Covenant. Like over the whole world, the Genesis. Huh? Episkiazi. The, whole, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. This is a new creation. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And the one to be born of, of you, or the one to be born, will be called Holy, the Son of God. The full extent of that We'll only wait, we'll have to see heaven, be in heaven before we can find a grasp of that. You see, this is getting us ready for Christmas. A week from today is Christmas. The new presence of Christ on earth. Do you believe it? Is this a game we play? Is this a little sort of theater piece to keep us happy? Or is this Christ living again in the church and bringing us to experience that he is the son of David? He is the King. He is the Savior. You see? And behold, and now there's a sign given, as there's always a sign given. Elizabeth, your your relative, uh, you see, she has conceived a son in her old age, and I'm really old. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called a sterile. Why? Because nothing is impossible with God. It's a direct quote from Genesis 18:14 where Sarah, elderly, is laughing. And the angel says, it's going to happen to you. Nothing is impossible to God. If he promises, he does it. And so to this younger, virginal woman, who in some way had promised her virginity to God, the same thing. Nothing is impossible to God. So now, what does Mary say? Literally, in Greek, idu, iduli kiriu. Behold the servant of the Lord. You see, let it happen to me according to your word. But how did she say that? Do you think she said, well, all right. No. She said, yes. Yes. And everything that implies, everything that the Messiah is going to suffer in Isaiah 53, I know all about. Yes. And the fathers of the church, experiencing that yes in their own heart, getting it from Mary, that's how they knew long before we figured it out theologically, she was immaculately conceived. There was nothing holding back that yes. Nothing. And that's how they knew. And so, if you want to learn about Mary, read this, and when you get to that final line, you see, listen, and see if you can hear the beauty and the force and the love and the desire and the feminine beauty of that yes. And the angel left her. Amen.